We're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects that combines my interest in astronomy and flat earth debunking. That's star trails. Now many of us have seen photographs of star trails, but very few of us actually understand them well and what they show us about our beautiful spherical earth. So let's cue up the music and learn a little bit about star trails. Now, in order to have a basic understanding of how a star trail is formed, we have to understand how an equatorial mount works. This is a photograph of a German equatorial mount, which is pretty standard. You'll see something there called the polar axis. That red arrow is pointed directly at the northern or the southern celestial pole. We're going to discuss this in terms of the northern celestial pole because I live in the United States. Now, if you were to rotate the telescope left and right on the axis that the weights are on, that's called rotating it in declination. Now, what we see here is the telescope rotating around that polar axis. This is called rotation in right ascension. Now, the reason that the telescope rotates in right ascension is once you have it polar aligned and you use your declination to center an object in the center of the viewfinder, as the Earth rotates underneath you, that object will appear to rotate around that axis in a counterclockwise fashion. By rotating the entire telescope in right ascension counterclockwise, you continue to follow that object from sundown to sunup. It'll stay in exactly the same spot in your viewfinder because the telescope is rotating and tracking it. Now here's an interesting thought exercise. If we started off with a German equatorial mount with a camera on it, and we took a time exposure of the star, and that equatorial mount tracked the rotation of the Earth and rotated in right ascension during that exposure, say we took it for a minute, would we see star trails? No. The stars would be individual points of light. The reason for that is due to the right ascension movement of the equatorial mount. It keeps that star in exactly the same spot. It's compensating for the rotation of the Earth. How fast does this telescope move in right ascension? A 15 degree per hour drift. 15 degrees per hour. It matches the rotational speed of the Earth. Well, while the normal situation is that that polar axis is pointed directly at the northern celestial pole, Let's do something a little bit different. Suppose instead of pointing it at the North Celestial Pole, we point it over to the northeast sky at the star Capella. Then if we move the telescope quickly in right ascension, what would happen to the stars around Capella? They would form circular star trails centered on the star Capella. This is an important concept to remember for later. Well, if we have a camera mounted on an equatorial mount and we're rotating that mount in right ascension to match the rotation of the Earth, all we're going to get is a star field. We're not going to get any star trails. However, if we put the camera on a standard tripod and point it more or less towards the north, we will get star trails with a time exposure and those circular star trails will be centered on the northern celestial pole. Now, one common misconception is that the star trails are centered wherever the camera is pointed. That's not correct. Star trails are centered at the axis of rotation of the Earth at the northern celestial pole. And as a result, if you have a camera pointed anywhere towards the northern sky, you will see a star trail, a circular star trail, centered at the north celestial pole. Now, in this case, you will actually see the celestial equator where the stars are kind of going up in this direction at the right side of the photograph. Now, the reason for that is probably best shown with this illustration. As you can see, the axis of rotation of the Earth goes through the north and the south poles. It points directly at the northern celestial pole. 
all of the stars in the sky rotate around that spot because the Earth is rotating underneath them. As a result, the Earth rotates from west to east, so the stars in the northern hemisphere appear to move counterclockwise. In the southern hemisphere, they will appear to move clockwise because you're sitting on the Earth and it's rotating around that pole, much like the telescope rotated in right ascension on the equatorial mount. As a result, even though the camera in this shot is not pointing directly at the northern celestial pole, the stars form circular star trails around that northern celestial pole because the axis of the rotation of the Earth is the factor that determines where the star trails are centered, not where the camera is pointed. Let's go ahead and have a look at something a little different. Normally when we look at star trails, we're looking at them with a camera on a tripod from the ground. Let's put ourselves in the International Space Station. Now in this shot, we're looking dead ahead on the orbit of the International Space Station. So as the space station orbits around the Earth, we're looking directly ahead in the path of the orbit. Notice that the star trails are vertical. Now, if instead of looking directly ahead of our path on the ISS, we gaze a little bit over to the left, we're going to start seeing something a little different. Notice that we've got a circular star trail centered on a point in the upper left corner here, and we're starting to get that curved appearance to the stars. As we continue to look left until we are 90 degrees to the path of our orbit, we'll see the axis of rotation of our orbit as the center of this circular star trail. In the center of that star trail is not the North Celestial Pole. It's actually the axis of the rotation or the orbit of the ISS around the Earth. To help visualize that, let's look at our equatorial mount again. Recall that we said that if we took that equatorial mount and we align the polar axis not with the North Celestial Pole, but with the star Capella in the Northeast, and rather rapidly move this telescope in right ascension, as you see, we would form a circular star trail about Capella because that is the axis that we are rotating in right ascension. If this instead was the International Space Station, it is rotating around this axis of its orbit. Now, as the International Space Station makes one complete orbit around the Earth every 92 minutes or so, that's far faster than 15 degrees per hour. So the star trails that you will see are centered on the axis of that orbit, much like they would be centered on the polar axis of this equatorial mount if we were instead pointing it to the star Capella and making a rapid rotation of the telescope in right ascension. Well, in the next section of the video, I want to go ahead and have a look at a claim from a flat earther who, in two and a half minutes, not only fails to prove that the Earth is flat, but provides us with a perfect globe Earth proof. Now, this is a video that appeared on a prominent flat Earth channel called Globe Busters. Now, Globe Busters is run by Mr. Bob Nodell. Now, you may have heard of Bob Nodell in the past because he and his buddies went out and bought a $20,000 ring laser gyro to prove that the Earth was flat and stationary. Unfortunately, when they turned the gyro on, it showed a 15 degree per hour drift. Thank you, Bob. If I were to describe a typical flat earther, I could do it in two words. One, ignorance, and two, arrogance. And this flat earther demonstrates both in this video. Ignorance because they have absolutely no clue as to how to understand the geometry of the problem they're trying to solve. And the arrogance comes from making a YouTube video demonstrating their misunderstanding of the basic science. So, this flat earther lives in Denver, Colorado, which is at approximately 40 degrees north latitude. Now, if you're in Denver, Colorado, and you look straight up at night, what direction are you looking? Well, you're looking at 40 degrees in reference to the celestial equator, which is parallel to the Earth's equator. So, if you look straight down to the south, 90 degrees down, what direction are you looking? 
Well, the first 40 degrees brings you down to the equator, and then you have another 50 degrees that you have to go to south. 40 degrees is his zenith, and his southern horizon is at 50 degrees south latitude. Now, what he did was he set a camera up pointing south, and he elevated it 35 degrees above his horizon. That would put him looking downward at about 15 degrees. Now, what would you see if you photographed a star trail for a couple of hours? Well, here's your photograph. Now, if your photograph is centered at 15 degrees south latitude, in the bottom, you would see star trails moving in this direction about the southern celestial pole. On the top of the photograph, you would see some star trails moving in this direction, counterclockwise, around the north celestial pole. And here in the center, approximately 15 degrees above the center of your photograph, you would see star trails moving in parallel with each other. So let's go see what his problem is. And I did this one last Friday evening. I'll run through this. I'll stop it right there. Now I was facing directly south, 180 degrees, 35 degrees off the horizon. And if we go up here, we get these dead straight star trails right here. Now up here we get them curving up. Down here we got them curving down, down, straight, then they start arcing up. Now I did this one last night, same thing, 180 degrees south, 35 degrees off the horizon. Get the same thing, dead straight, curving down, curving up. I've only been doing these for a short while, but isn't that the view that we should get if we were standing at the equator, not in Denver, Colorado? Yeah, exactly as we predicted on a spherical rotating Earth. Thanks, Bob. But wait, there's more. He also proves that the moon is in orbit around the Earth. Now I'm going to show you that section of his video. You think about it for a second, and then I'll explain it. This one I did last Saturday evening, and I was facing 186 degree asthma, 35 degrees off the horizon. And we get the same thing, dead straight, curving up, curving down. This is the moon, following the stars perfectly. Like I said, I'm just getting started looking into these star trails, but this is not a view I would expect to see from Denver, Colorado, but what I'd expect to see if I was standing at the equator. Okay, so here's his image. Now, we've got a couple of things here. First of all, he's identified this large, heavy streak as the moon. Now, the moon's diameter is about half a degree. Now, you can't really tell much from the streak, but if you look at the width of that streak, the moon is a round object, so the width of the streak is also about half of a degree. Now, the key to understanding why this proves that the moon is in orbit is the star trail you see it's curving downward a little bit, and it's just underneath the beginning of the moon trail. Now, look at the length of that star trail. Go ahead and take a piece of paper and a pen, hold it up against the screen, and measure the length of that. Now, compare the length of that to the length of the trail of the moon. This photograph is a two and a half hour exposure. 
the moon moves approximately one moon width every hour, half a degree an hour. Compare the length of that moon trail to the star trail right underneath it. Is it the same or is it a little longer? Now, if it's a little longer, it's because the moon is moving in relationship to the background stars. It's in orbit. In two and a half minutes of a video by a flat earther, he not only managed to prove that the earth is a rotating sphere, he also proved that the moon was in orbit around the earth. Not a bad day's work. Thanks, Bob. Now, I said that this video not only tied into my interest in astronomy, but in my flat earth debunking work. Now to tell you why I find this so interesting on my debunking work is that this clearly demonstrates something that destroys the entire concept of the flat earth. One of the things that we constantly hear from the flat earth, from photographs from space or the International Space Station that show the curve of the earth is that it's a fisheye lens. Let's look at something here. Are these star trails round? Are they distorted in any way, shape, or form? If this was a fisheye lens causing distortion, that round star trail would be distorted as well. However, it's not. But the surface of the Earth is very clearly curved. You can't have it both ways, Flat Earth. If this is a fisheye lens, both would be distorted. It's not a fisheye lens. The star trails are round. The surface of the Earth is curved. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you again for stopping by. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe. And remember, we have memberships and a Patreon for this channel. Bye.